What are you doing? Dude, a little privacy. Getting under this sweet elephant's foot. I'm show off on your tasting today. What's it for? Well, so you can sleep in your clothes and you have a sleeping bag and you can draw the bottom and then run if you have to. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. I thought I'd start out today by talking through some of the PCU or the protective combat uniform details. So we wrote a really extensive article with help from other contributors like Matt Sharp and some people that have written for us before. It's huge, it's enormous, but what I wanted to show here on Gear Tasting is just a little bit of a comparison between the Block 1 uh, garments as well as the, I'm sorry, Block 0 garments as well as the Block 1 garments. So when PCU first came out, and you'll read this in the article, which I hope you guys do, um, because this is more of a supplement, which I'm going to walk through, but when it first came out back in 2003, Block Zero was what they first came out with. It's since got refined, and in 2006, they kind of came out with uh, some releases for the Block 1 stuff, and then now they're kind of into a Block 2 stuff, which we went into as well. I don't own any Block 2 stuff, so I can't really compare that stuff to this, but the fit and finish is better. It's been progressed, or it's been progressing over time into a better end product for the end user, which are soft personnel. So what I wanted to do is start with block zero and then we'll get into block one. And I wanted to just talk through some differences. I'll show some features. Uh, but what I first wanted to start out with is kind of my experience with the PCU system. Back when I was in the Navy, they were issuing stuff like this. So this was, this is the poly pro stuff that they used to issue. This is uh I think this is part of the ECWCS line way back in the day, pre-2003, but don't quote me on that. I know it was still getting issued um, whenever I was in the Navy. So the problem with this stuff is that when it gets wet, it's just terrible. So that was the whole invention of the PCU is to create garments that would not only push moisture away and out of the system, uh, but then also dry quickly. So getting away from things like this. So first off, I'm not going to go, uh, I'm not really going to talk about the specifics of what each layer is for. I just more want to talk about uh, what each piece of the system looks like. So back uh, when block zero first started off, this was level one. So this was level one A. So you can see the difference. You got a short sleeve shirt versus a long sleeve shirt. Um, they started to get into this wicking fabric, as you can see, versus this more looks like an Under Armour shirt in the, the short sleeve version. Then there's, there's George to go along with that too. Um, one of my issues is now that, you know, this stuff is, God, I'm over 10 years old. The elastic is just, it looks like granny panties. You know, it's just terrible. So um, anyway, I keep it around for posterity. I don't use uh, some of the older Block Zero stuff, but I think it's kind of cool. I've hung on to it because it allows me to do stuff like this. So. Anyway, the way level one works is you've got a short sleeve and boxers, and then you've got a long sleeve and long, uh, long johns, basically. So as you can see with this, this type of material, uh, this was kind of transitioned to still be used in the block zero. So this is very similar. Uh, you can tell there's a little bit of difference when you look through these and you look at the weave. Um, so this is basically, this is the short sleeve and boxers from block one. Uh, but you can see that material kind of stayed the same. It probably made some improvements over time. I, I do see a little bit of a difference, but wanted to show that too. Then you get into level two, which is one of my favorite layers. It's a great mid layer for layering. Um, and I still wear the, the level two in both the block zero and the block one. I kind of wear them interchangeably because they haven't changed all that much. Um, you can see the uh, level Block Zero was a, it's kind of a waffle top. That's what it's commonly referred to as. Um, in Block Zero, it came in both this alpha green, that's that greenish color, they called it alpha green. Um, and then also in the coyote type color um, in both Block Zero and Block One. So if you compare these two, you can see the, the waffle top did change a little bit over time. So in Block One, that waffle top came all the way up into the neck, uh, whereas block one, they kind of eliminated some of that and made the neck a little more flexible by not taking the waffle pattern all the way up. But the actual material that was used, uh, the waffle material is still relatively the same. And in level two, you've got long pants that are made out of that same waffle material as well. So I always get these confused. So that is level two. 
And then back on the, just real quickly on the block one side, you can see that you know, you've got the long sleeve shirt as well as the long pants in the level one too uh, versus the block zero. So then you get a lot of difference um, when you're comparing level three in both block zero and block one. It's very frustrating, block zero, block one, sorry. Um, you, relatively, it's, it's still the same type of material. Um, you've still got this kind of mid-layer type warmth layer, if you will. Uh, but you can see that between block zero and block one, they made some refinements, like uh, instead of just having this neck with that, uh, that same uh, material, they actually went with a, uh, a waffle pattern more on the neck to reduce abrasion and things like that. And you can see they eliminated the pits. So they used to have a pit with a waffle pattern on block zero and then block one, they kind of went to eliminate that. But my hiccup is I actually really like block zero better when it comes to level three, just because um, this for me got super stretched out and it wasn't anything I did. I just feel like this is just a different material. Um, it's polyester, but it still wicks fairly well. And then you can see kind of the interior difference between those two. Not a whole lot of difference. The material is still the same thickness relatively. Um, you can see they, they still kept the zipper. They now added a, an accessory pocket though um, for the level three on the inside, just like that. So that is level three. Bring this back up here. And then we get into level four, which is the windshirt layer. And just real quickly, I know that some of you might not have read the article by the time this, this you're watching the video. So I do want to say that these levels aren't meant to stack on top of each other. So you're not going to wear a level one, then a two, then a three, then a four. It's not like that. It's really, it's about finding what works for you and your body type really. And you'll read that in the article too. So windshirt layer, um, some of the refinements they made when they went from block zero to block one uh, were just kind of fit and finish stuff too. So you can see that they, you know, started color matching the zippers. Um, they eliminated the, the side zip pocket on the windshirt. Um, and then with block one, things started getting ma made by Patagonia around this time frame uh, versus just like Orc Industries and I think um, Secri or Cirque, I can't remember how you pronounce it, but that was another manufacturer that was making the early stuff in the PCU system. And then uh, like you get into a company called Haley's, H-A-L-Y-S, um, like that when you get into block one stuff. So again, wind shirt is, you know, really a wind blocking layer. It's got a drawstring on the bottom. It had a drawstring on the bottom in block zero too, but um, just, you know, real fit and finish type things that they changed. They eliminated the, um, the adjustable sleeves and full of just a, a full elastic version. So that was a big difference. And then they both have a, Oh, I was wrong about that. So they also went to a storable hood, a stowable hood. So with block one, level four hood now tucks into the collar uh, versus block zero that just has a hood kind of full time. I think what they had before, yeah, I don't remember, right? So this had a kind of a roll top type configuration. So you could roll up the hood, yeah basically thread it through there and then you could stow your hood that way in the level four. So then level five, which is a soft shell layer. This is probably my favorite piece to both of these uh, versions. Uh, so level five on both of these, soft shell. There's some, there's some big changes that happened with this. Um, just starting off at the sleeves, they've still both got adjustable sleeves, but again, you can see where they started color matching a little better on the loop Velcro uh, for the sleeves. They went from a Velcro pocket opening like this on the sleeve to a side zip pocket on the sleeve, just like so. Um, this material is, is definitely a little bit different. I think there's kind of probably a newer generation of material they went with here. You can see color match zippers again things like that. And again, this one's made by Patagonia. This is um, the standard. I think this is a cool little thing that I think it was either Orc Industries or Secre did, but there's a little pirate flag logo on the inside of these on the Block Zero stuff. I always thought that was pretty cool. 
So again, level five is just a very versatile layer um, in terms of a soft shell. It's one of my favorite soft shells. They went away from a waterproof zipper on the front too, as you can see, and they, so they've always had this kind of zipper backer. I'm escaping me what that's called, but so they kind of reinforce that on this layer too. They both have stowable hoods. Um, and then level five on block one came with suspenders. So these are the suspenders that it came with to wear your pants. Um, the pants have quite a bit of a difference between them too, which I wanted to just quickly address. So you can see on the, the actual legs, these went from just being a standard kind of layer or a standard cuff, if you will. They both, they had a zipper that's probably about I guess three quarters up the leg, so it helps get them on over boots and things like that. And they still retain that feature on block one, but what they have now is they have kind of this uh, rubberized elastic that's in the, in the cuff, and you can take the included, I think I have it here, yeah, take the included shock cord that it comes with, comes with these shock cord pieces, and you can basically make your own gaiter uh, by threading this through and into the bottom of your boot. So you can do this with paracord too. You don't necessarily have to have the shock cord that it came with uh, to do so. But it is an interesting feature so it allows that the pant to stay on the bottom of the boot to prevent snow and things like that from coming in uh, with a gaiter. So that is a change there on the pants. Um, think if there's anything else real quickly. Yeah, so actually they used to have a side zipper so they still do but I don't think it comes well, it looks like it's about the same length you can see they went away with those from those waterproof zippers pretty much everywhere though on the side so this is it's what the pants look like they've got a, a side opening here too for quickly basically donning and doffing and things like that so those are that's the level five stuff the soft shell and then moving into level six, level six is kind of like the main waterproof Gore-Tex layer. Um, it had some huge changes uh, when, it, when you're looking at block zero to block one. So these are, I look at this more as fit and finish type issues too. Um, you can see the tape seams on the inside of the Gore-Tex on level six in the block zero versus the tape seams on the inside here. Much better. Um, this has started to peel up a lot on the original stuff. I mean, I know it's over 10 years old, but at the same time, um, I think the modern stuff will, will wind up holding up a lot better. Different material overall. You can see uh, right away that there's a big difference there. There's some side pockets here. Go into the inside. And it's got a full kind of clasp in the front. So they've elected to go to this rather than a waterproof zipper like they had on the Block Zero. So it's inside, all made with Gore-Tex. And again, it's got pants. And the pants have a, a full length zipper so you can put them on over your, your BDUs or what have you if you encounter a, a heavy downpour or something like that. So that's level six. Moving on to level seven. So level seven, there was a vest with Block Zero stuff, but I don't have that for this, But uh, so I will show it on basically the seven from block one. So this is just a vest layer. So it's got that waffle grid material around the neck. And again, you know, fit and finish differences between just level set, what level seven looked like. You can kind of imagine what the vest looked like. So they went away from this extra padding here to kind of prevent backpack strap shaping. And on the big level seven here on block one, this is what you're left with now. So they added loop Velcro to the sleeves on level seven. Um, just again, some fit and finish issues. This is actually a waterproof zipper. It's hard to tell, but that was a waterproof zipper and this is not. So just comparing and contrasting again, kind of the interior. So those are the differences there. Instead of just a, you know, an access pocket like this, they actually put a zipper on it too, on the inside, which is nice. Um, and then the pants that come with level seven. So that's just kind of a quick comparison between the two. Um, one thing that I wanted to add on too that it's really not um, part of the 
layering system, but there's this elephant bag sleeping bag that was made by Sierra Designs that we talked about in the article, and I just wanted to kind of give you an idea what the size was like of this. So the premise behind this is that you are sleeping in your level seven stuff or what have you outside, not actually in a sleeping bag. And this is like a three quarter inch sleeping bag. It's called elephant's foot. So the bottom of this has a drawstring and it can draw up. So this is all primal off material that's in here. So you can draw this up over your boots um, and put the shoulder straps on or suspenders, if you will, on over your level seven stuff and actually sleep in this. And then if you know something happens in the middle of the night, you just open the drawstring bottom and you can walk around or do your business or what have you um, in the sleeping bag. So that way you're not climbing into a full sleeping bag. I think it's a cool concept. I keep this in my truck just as a supplemental sleeping bag. That way I don't have to roll with a full sleeping bag in my truck. Um, so I kind of keep this in there for emergency purposes. That's, that's my usage of it thus far. So just to walk through the PCU again, we'll link to the article in the description below so you can kind of get an idea of actually what we're talking about too if you're not familiar with the PCU system. So just wanted this to be a quick overview, overview between the Block Zero stuff and the Block One stuff. Alright guys, welcome to Questions Over Coffee. Today I've got a couple questions and then I will address the winners of our contest that we had last week to celebrate the one year anniversary of gear tasting. So first question is from B34NS, sounds like a droid. As a fellow fan of Mass Gray, have you ever come across a hydration tube cover that comes close? So uh, I just want to kind of take the opportunity to talk about hydration tube covers for those of you that might not be familiar with those. So what that is is basically a cover that's camouflaged that slips over your hydration tube if you're you feel that it's not going to blend in with your environment i've tried a couple of these things and i'm i'm just really not a huge fan of those they always wind up riding up the hydration tube anyway and they're more of a hindrance than a help in my opinion uh, especially with things like source bladder and uh, which i love as you can see i've got quite a few of them up here uh, but so this was my solution way back in the day when i was using a camelback i just zip tied it you know, to the end of the hydration tube because it kept riding up and getting screwed up anyway. Um, I think that with the colors that Source offers in their hydration tubes, there's really no reason to run something like a hydration tube cover. I think that these pretty much cover a pretty good gamut of the patterns that are out there. And to address your mass gray question, um, it's a mass gray backpack. I really think that this grayish color that they have, which I think they call foliage or something like that from Source, is a pretty damn good match for mass gray in my opinion. Uh, but again, they make them in black too, uh, as well as this coyote with kind of the black checkered design in it, which pretty much goes with everything that's not, I guess, dark camo, if you will. So um, that's just a little bit on hydration bladders. These are all Source hydration bladders, as you can see. Um, that's my hydration bladder of choice. We haven't really, I don't think, got into hydration bladders too much on gear tasting, um, but these are just a couple of the sizes that they, they offer. Um, and I, I swear by these things. I've used them quite a bit in a lot of different activities like a Go Ruck Challenge and Go Ruck Ascent and things like that, um, climbing 14ers, what have you. I've used them on pretty much everything. The, the one thing that, you, that I'll give you as a little tip is if you fill up the hydration bladder full, and then you turn it upside down and you can, you can basically suck out the air through the hydration tube that's left in the bladder and that will prevent the sloshing you typically get with bladders. Um, as well as uh, breathing or pushing the water back into the reservoir itself uh, in cold weather conditions so your hydration tube doesn't freeze. I've learned that the hard way at Mammoth last year during freezing conditions, my hydration tube bladder froze up because I didn't do that. So thanks for the question. Okay, next question comes from OPE on Twitter, it's O-P-E-Y. Uh, should I take my first handgun class with a Glock 17 on the waistband or a Glock 43 in the waistband, my CCW? So a couple of considerations you might wanna do is one, first check with the instructor and see what they allow. I know some instructors don't allow appendix carry and things like that in their classes, so it's best to always just defer to the instructor first and foremost. Um, but as far as your gun selection goes, I would 
run a class preferably with what you carry every day. That's my opinion on that and that's what I try to do when I take classes is I try to run the setup that I commonly have. I've, you know, I probably started out my classes years ago running, you know, the cool guy kit and trying to, you know, run what I thought I would use, but realistically, um, you're going to probably run something more like uh, mag pouches on your belt that you have and your CCW holster, that type of setup, rather than, you know, a, a big battle belt, which a battle belt's easy. We've talked about that too. That's also easy to grab from the car. I don't personally run one of those, but that's a really quick thing to grab out of your trunk or something and throw on if you're in that kind of situation. So little aside there. So again, um, it really depends if you're running, you know, in my opinion, you're not running on the waistband unless you're in an open carry state and you like carrying open carry. Personally, I Texas just passed that and I've never carried open carry unless I'm out hunting or something like that. My opinion is why kind of show your cards before you have to in that certain that in that situation. So that's my take on that. Thanks for your question. Okay, last question comes from Joel Lado. Sorry if I'm butchering your last name. On Twitter, winter is coming. Do you have any winter Arctic gear recommendations? PCU system. Um, I would highly recommend this. I didn't really address it earlier, but this stuff can all be found on eBay since it's old military surplus at this point. Um, even the Block 1 stuff that I went over that's the newer stuff, you can probably find a little more readily available than you can even the Block 0 stuff now. Um, uh, stick with Patagonia if you can on layers 4 through 7, uh, if you can find it. And then the, the, older st or the lower stuff like layer, what is that, 3 through 1, uh, Haley's is a good recommended source for that. Um, we, we address all this in the article, so I'd really defer you to that too if you're interested in picking that stuff up. So um, that's what I'd recommend as far as winter stuff for bang for the buck. Um, on the commercial side of things, you can pick up some Arteryx Leaf stuff that's really good too. I've used a ton of that. Um, I will put the article below when I went over to Chamonix, France, and we we're using all that stuff. I have some pretty good write-up um, on the gear and equipment that I used during that adventure. All right, so now what everybody's been waiting for, the results, that was my drum roll, of our contest, where we're giving away a messenger bag, a gear tasting mug, and some other goodies for one lucky gear tasting watcher, uh, watcher, viewer, listener, yeah. So our big winner is Johan Bjorsson, uh, sorry if I'm messing up your name, from Twitter, who printed out a really cool page with gear tasting on it and laid everything out. He's got some gear on it. Uh, I really thought that was creative and really loved your entry. Thank you very much for that. You were the big winner. However, we have some honorable mentions we didn't talk about before, actually giving away some other prizes, but we selected three honorable mentions to send you guys out some stuff too. Um, won't be anything like big messenger bag giveaway, but we have some stuff for you. Uh, honorable mentions. First is, hey, Kenny Gray. <laughs> I guess that's your name from Instagram. Uh, He's got his knives and she's arranged uh, in the shape of our logo. I thought that was also very cool and creative. And as you can see, while we did select a couple people that have some very elaborate gear setups, really wasn't a requirement to have a huge gear collection like we have here at ITS headquarters. So second runner up, EM Fuentes from Facebook. Uh, had just had a really awesome all around collection uh, rooftop tent, which I love. I've been wanting to pick one of those up myself one of these days. I'll get around to it, I'm sure. Um, and then the third runner-up was Billy Bogota, who's probably one of our biggest fans, I think, uh, based on your collection. Super cool. Pretty much have everything that we have for patches, so we're actually going to have to do our homework on what we can send you that you don't already have, so we'll be sending you something as well. So thank you, thank you for everybody that entered. We had some really kick-ass entries, so thanks again. This has been an incredible year. So thanks for all you guys do to help us keep going here on Gear Tasting.